Hello, my creative friends. My name is Heather North. You can find me on Instagram at Heather's Creative Blessings. I am here with floss tube number 11, and I'm noticing my screen doing a couple of weird things. So, hmm. I played, I don't even know how I did it, but I touched my phone and I was trying. I was trying to wipe something off that was on my phone and there's this thing about exposure. So it is, it was sunny earlier today and now it's raining and I'm seeing it flashing in and out of the light. So I don't know if I'll like this setting, but sorry, you guys, you're along with me for the ride, learning how to do this floss soup thing and work with an iPhone. Um, not, I mean, I've had an iPhone for years, but I, I, did, I haven't done recorded videos on them and things. So it's February 2nd, 2021. This is a floss tube video, so it will be mainly about what's been going on in my cross stitch world in the past week with a little bit of life update thrown in here and there. Um, where should I start? So much to talk about. Oh, it's been a week. Um, I'm getting over an ear infection. I may sound a little bit congested still. Um, we almost had to take our dog to the emergency vet hospital. Of course, it happens on a Saturday night after hours that she starts getting sick and uh, we called first and they said it's going to be a six to eight hour wait before they can even see her. So we kept an eye on her at home. She ended up being fine, but I spent Saturday afternoon, evening, night, just really keeping an eye on her. I didn't do any stitching during that time. Um, I've got lots of floss tubes to catch up on. I'm trying to watch them. Um, several people I've started and I've got like five, 10, 15 minutes. Sometimes I've got 30 seconds and then I get pulled away to something else. And so I've got a lot to catch up on, but I want to start with thanking those of you who reached out to me on Instagram and sent me messages that way or commented on my last video. I asked for some ideas for finishing, um, like fully finishing, especially the project that I um, made for my friend who's currently in recovering from COVID and in rehab. I just saw some what are those called? Like little strings from the glue when you use the hot glue gun. I was just pulling those off. Sorry, squirrel. Um, anyways, I asked for some finishing for the project that I made for my friend Mandy and also some ideas of people to watch so that I can get more finishing ideas because I don't want everything to just look exactly the same. And so several of you reached out to me, several of you commented. I have them written all down here and I'm going to, um, in the comment section down below or in the description section here on YouTube, I'm going to list out the people and um, try and tag them if I can find them. So if you're interested in some finishing um, videos, you can look for them too. Uh, I haven't been able to watch any of them yet, <laughs> but I recognize some of the names because um, just random floss tube or YouTube random showing me autoplay. I've seen a couple of people, not necessarily their finishing videos, but I also did a search for dyeing fabric, dyeing your own fabric, and I know at least one of them was on there for that. So. Um, yeah, lots to look at. Uh, I'll just say really quickly what they are. Helen D, the Twisted, Stitch, Twisted Stitcher, um, Vana. Oh, what's her last name? Starts with a P. Uh, Elizabeth, I don't, sorry. I'll, I'll, I'll figure it out when I put it on there. Maybe that is the Twisted Stitcher, that's Va Vana. Um, anyways, Elizabeth Ann can stitch. Uh, Java Girl stitches. And then, of course, I told you I'd already seen, but worth mentioning, Priscilla and Chelsea from Stitching with the Housewives, both on their channel and on the Fat Quarter Shop Floss Tube channel. Um, and they also, on the Fat Quarter Shop channel, probably both their regular and their floss tube, they've got some finishing ideas, different things you can make, different projects like mug rugs and pillows and, and other ways to finish besides just having them framed. I can't afford to have everything framed. I have too much, and I don't have enough wall space to, well, I guess I could take all this down, but I kind of like what's in here. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, I, I can't afford to have them all framed. So thank you so much, Tanya. Spielman, especially, she um, 
has, I'll be mentioning her a couple of times, but I just want to say, hi, Tanya. <laughs> Thank you so much for um, all the encouragement and letting me know of different things, different YouTubers, different stitch alongs, different things like that. So um, yeah, I'll go ahead and link that down below. One of the things I wanted to do, I saw somebody and I am sorry, I don't know who it was I saw. I don't know if it was on Flosstube or if it was on Instagram. Like I said, every time I would pick up my mobile device, either my phone or my iPad or my laptop to look at something or look up something, I would just get called away for whatever reason. Or I would get really dizzy because uh, what happens with me when I get ear infections, it gets kind of swollen in, in, in my middle ear or inner ear. And then I get very dizzy. I get vertigo. And so, um, but I have allergies. So I'm constantly dealing with allergies and draining and pff, you don't want to hear about all that. But anyways, a bit kind of squirrely. So it makes sense that this video is a little bit squirrely. Huh. So what was I? Oh, that's what I was at. I, good thing I have notes, right? <laughs> notes. <laughs> um, I saw somebody give their stats for January because this is the first floss tube I'm doing in February. And I thought, oh, I like that. I like stats. I like keeping track of things. Um, because sometimes when you're working along, it feels like you're not accomplishing very much. And honestly, that's why I started sharing my stitching on Instagram was, uh, more just for me to keep track of what I've been doing because it, it motivated me to take pictures. And then I could see I was making progress because, because otherwise I feel like I'm working on the same snowflake that I've been working on for 10 million years, exaggeration, and I'm not getting anywhere. So if you're feeling that way too, maybe start taking some pictures. Even if you don't post on on uh, Instagram or any or Facebook or anything like that, if you're just taking the pictures, you can see some progress. So for January, I had six finishes. Woohoo! I had one FFO. I have a fully finished to show you, and I had seven new starts, so more starts than finishes, but that's okay. I'm not yet overwhelmed. May get close to that after February. <laughs> March might just be, I've heard of March Madness. I was watching, um, oh, what is her name? She does the 24 hours of cross stitch. Is it Jen Quirks and Stitches? I think that's who it was. And she mentioned something about madness or March madness. And I don't know if that's starting all the things in March or if that's finishing all the things in March. Um, but March madness for me might be finishing. Might not. April will definitely be working on finishing things or working on stitching on whips because May is stitch mania. And I do plan on starting more for stitch mania. So um, what's up next? Whip go. I want to touch on this because it was the end of the month. Finished Whipco. Whipco is a brainchild of Jesse Marie Does Stuff. And she just had a baby recently. So I am just thankful that she came up with this idea, but also that she called out new numbers because let me tell you, when my babies were newborns, I probably would have forgotten. I mean, I forget and I don't have babies anymore. My kids are in their 20s. So um, yeah, she called new numbers. But first, I wanted to let you know that I did finish and I think I talked about this in my last video, but I did finish my WIPGO goals. Um, the numbers for I don't have the numbers written down here for January, but let it snow. I can pull out my WIPGO board. Let this is my personal whip go board. So let it snow. I fully finished. Well, didn't fully finish. I finished the cross stitching. Um, I plan, I'll get to that in a minute, maybe, but I'm planning on turning that into a project bag. That's kind of what I'm thinking. Um, so that, but that one is com completely finished, but not fully finished. If that makes sense, <laughs> probably only to me. Singing in the rain. I don't have that to show you, but I did get, um, is there something on my eye? Oh, my eyelash fell. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Singing in the rain. I got, uh, the top row done and I did, I think I did a second, 
because there was one umbrella. I think I did a second umbrella um, on that second row. And then that's gonna go away to the spring. Um, that That's gonna go away. I didn't bring it down here to share, but um, I'll bring it out next time I bring it out. Uh, there is a slight possibility because Wednesdays for me are whip Wednesdays. I work on my works in progress, any whip. Um, so if I get all my whips done for a whip go, uh, that I have in progress, I may go back and pull that out again as my Wednesday whip, because I'm always going to touch a whip go project for at least one of my stitching sessions or at least an hour uh, on Wednesdays. Okay, and the last one is Winter Notes. I have that here. This one, um, I definitely got done what I planned on doing this month. I wanted to do one of the, mo Oops, sorry, one of the motifs. And um, I was kind of breaking it into three to five sections. And I really, I kind of wanted to get this top one. I definitely got the top third. And then I was just working on it, um, I don't know, Saturday or Sunday, maybe it was Sunday because it was the last day of January and just seeing, well, where can I get to? And I got much further than I expected. And I had planned on putting this away as well um, while I worked on the new Whipco things, but I may just keep it out a little bit to work on it a little bit. Because look! look I got down into the snowman um I filled in the windows and the snowflake on the house I need to frame out the house and fill that in I need to finish um I think what it needs is the buttons and like the carrot nose on the um on the snowman and there's little buttons and I have some buttons that go with it so um some of it may be stitching some of it may be buttons that they're kind of coming off of their arms. Obviously, need to put the arms on. And then the snowbank down below. So this is coming along really nicely. And it's a really cute, cute stitch. So I don't know if I will uh, put it away in February. I may just bring it out. I don't know. But for now, I met my Whip Go goal. This is a project that I 100% plan on finishing now in 2021. So that's the first one. Then she called new numbers. So the new numbers called were 20 and the number four. And here's the funny thing. Um, I want to say, oh, it was the 27th. She calls the numbers on the 27th. So that was last Wednesday. I was not bored, but a little bit bored with the projects I've been working on and I wanted to pull out something new, something that didn't have white stitching. I love the way white looks on um, fabric. Uh, I love, I used a lot of white card bases when I was making cards. Um, I, I just like how crisp white is. However, when I'm stitching with white, I'm not enjoying it quite so much. So I was like, I want to just pull out something. I didn't want to necessarily start something new. Well, I kind of did, but I didn't want to get overwhelmed with new stuff. So I went into my whip basket um, of things that will be, that are on my whip go board. And I thought of two things. One, Quilty Love. I saw Quilty Love and I thought, you know what? And I almost pulled that out because I saw that it had hearts. Um, and I thought, well, I'm going to do that. I'm going to pull it, definitely work on it in February. It's the month of love, right? Um, and then the other one was grandpa's truck. And I had wanted to stitch on that in January and hadn't pulled it out yet. So I was between those two things. I thought I'll work on those. And then I remembered it was the 27th and Jesse Marie does stuff was going to call the new whip go number. So I thought, Oh, maybe I'll grab I'll, maybe I'll see what she's got and grab that. And you know what number she called? Okay, so first was number 20. That's Quilty Love. Uh-huh, that's Quilty Love. It's like we were on the same wavelength. And my goal, because I wasn't sure, I knew that I was pulling this out in um, February, I, or that I pulled out in either February or Stitch Mania in May, because I started, I believe I started it in Mania. 
Um, so that was my plan already for the year before whip go. So my goal, not knowing when the number would be called, was to complete a row, either the heart row or the quilt block rows. And um, this is Quilty Love. And it's got Rick Rack. I still haven't decided. Um, I really like that look with the tiny Rick Rack. Whether I'm going to do that or do the actual stitching. I'm leaning towards the Rick Rack, but I don't know if I have it yet. So I'm going to have to order that. So um, I posted a picture on Instagram. This is where I'm at. I have not stitched on it yet. It's the February 2nd. So this will be stitched on tomorrow. But I have, so I'm on the heart row. So that would be my goal for the month would be to complete this heart row. Well, that's going to go pretty quickly. And it's the month of love. So I want to stitch hearts anyways. So I think for Whipco weekend, my, my plan is to hopefully have this row of hearts done before we even get to Whipco weekend. And then for the weekend, my goal will be, if I haven't, it, it'll be to finish that row. If I have, it will be to do a, one of the quilt blocks, whatever is next. So that's where I'm at with Whipco number 20. Um, I didn't work on it this week. When that number was called, I was like, oh my. <laughs> it's like we're on the same length. So then number four, and it's funny because I'd already decided to pull that out for February. Um, number four was Grandpa's Truck. That was the other one I was thinking of. I was like, oh. So my Whipco goal for, I'm going to read what it says in here. Um, those are my notes for everything I want to accomplish with Whipco this year. By the way, if I didn't say it already, it's for works in progress. Kind of like bingo, but for your works in progress, things that you've already started. Um, so one image, and I wasn't sure where I would be when this was called. So I just chose one image. Let me get the pattern out for you. So it would be the tree um, or the house or maybe half the house or the truck or the snowman or the rest of the snow. Um, and so depending on when it was called in the year and how much I had done on it, that was going to be my goal. So I posted a picture of what, um, where I was to start the month. I have worked on it. I've completed the tree. So I've already kind of finished Whipco already because it was such an easy goal, but it was kind of cool that it was called this month because February is a short month and you never know what's going to happen. And so, um, I actually love that these two were called this month. And then I got started some more on the house. So this is where I am. This is one of the few things that are in a Q snap. Um, let me pull this white thread. So as you can see, the tree is finished. So I've started on the house. So my goal for this month, even though I hadn't finished the tree when the month started, my it's already done and it was it was halfway done before this month was called so I am going to finish that bottom part of the house and I've already added in so I finished the tree and I added in some snow um, but if all else fails and I get no more stitching time be, for whatever reason I have put in something in this and I kind of met my goal but not really so I'll keep working on that it's funny because I didn't want to work on white. It's one of the reasons I chose Grandpa's truck because I had the um, the tree started. And so I was just going to work on <laughs> the tree part. And then I'm like, well, let's just add the snow under the tree. Well, I'm right here at the roof. Well, let's just add a little bit more. <laughs> Sometimes just giving yourself a little something different makes it so much easier. Wow, the sun just came out from the clouds and it's really bright in my eyes. Sorry, I'm squinting. So that's my whip go. I'll be working on those on Wednesdays. I'm already ahead of the game, which feels so good. So um, I wasn't planning on bringing out my January whips, but um, once I, if I fully finish both of those projects, cause that is a possibility, um, then I will pull back. I'll pull out winter notes again, would be the most likely one I would pull out. Okay. So I wanted to share this earlier in the video, but I forgot. <laughs> Good thing I wrote some notes down. Um, 
before I get into the rest of my whips, I want to give a shout out and a thank you, especially to Tanya Spielman. I'm going to put her name down below. She's on Instagram. She's another cross stitcher. She also, um, she's commented on my YouTube. I don't know that you've made floss. Tanya, have you made floss two videos yet? Her name is Tanya with a Y, but definitely check her out on Instagram. She um, shares some of her wonderful things and she's been great about reaching out and commenting, um, messaging me and messaging back. And she gave me some ideas for finishers. Um, she also reached out to the Crafty Cottage stitches, Stitchers. Um, they are here on Floss Tube and put together a stitch along, invited me to join in with her stitch along because I've already been stitching this. Um, I'll share that in just a minute. Uh, but I just wanted to say thank you, Tanya, for including me, making me feel like I'm a part of this community. I just think it's so wonderful when you start out, or I spent most of the year feeling kind of like I'm stitching alone. A little bit with my friend Mandy, she and I would open our stitch quarterly together and stuff, but I mean, together. I was at home, she was at her home over the phone <clears throat> um, or FaceTime or messaging, but not like together together. Um, and some of my other cross-stitching friends just haven't been cross-stitching, they haven't felt that. So to find a community has just been fabulous. And she happens to live, I think about 45 miles south of me-ish. Um, i not exactly sure. But the other two, this was so like mind blowing because here I am just sitting by myself in in my house um, and there's the branches against the window because I did not trim them back like I was going to. But in my defense, it has been raining a lot um, and I've had an ear infection, so I haven't been out there in it. Um, squirrel! <laughs> that I was watching so I'm here alone but I'm watching floss tube and I get a shout out I hear my name I'm like I'm a little bit nervous like they can see me <laughs> it's so stupid <laughs> oh but the cat the crafty cotton stitcher so it's Heather and Jeanette and um Heather is the designer that did the cozy winter wishes that I'm going to share here in a second. She's White House Stitchery on Instagram and on Etsy where you can find her patterns. And her mom, Jeanette, is Carly Court Stitches, I believe. And again, I'll link it in case I say it wrong. I'll 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 put it down in the description. But they were talking about me and I was like, oh my gosh, they live so close. They're up in Olympia. I'm just south of Olympia. And so when all this mess is over and we can get back to visiting places, I think the three of us and anyone else who is in Southwest Washington or Northwest um, Oregon should meet up at Acorns and Threads. I've never been there before. I'm looking forward to going um, for the first time, but you know, things just aren't really safe right now to do that, but eventually we will. So they gave me a shout out. I just want to say thank you. That was so much fun. Um, I, I think you guys are adorable. If you haven't seen their latest video. So if you haven't seen their, their latest video, uh, Ca crafty cottage stitchers, they, um, are, sh they showed, a few things that were really interesting. One was some of the fabric they've dyed and I wish, um, I wish I had some writ dye now because I'd really like some aqua pieces and I can't find anything like, um, you see that pillow there that has, it's got Washington state. I would love to have that darker aqua, not quite teal, but really aqua. And then the ship wheel in this love, it's hard to do above you. <laughs> I would like to have those two colors. Um, yeah, and and the one I have, I got some from Be Stitch Me, but it's more bright. And I think I want it a little more muted or lighter, minty. I don't know, I haven't found the perfect one. So I thought maybe if I dye it myself, um, but I'm gonna need to find some cheaper fabric if I'm gonna be experimenting with dyeing. Anyways, Heather showed some pieces that she's been dyeing and they seem like the perfect colors. And she also shared on Instagram what she used. So I'm gonna grab some of those um, colors in Rit dye the next time I go to a store that carries it. Um, or I may just see uh, if I can find it on Amazon and order it. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
The other thing they shared is some project bags they make. And at the very end of the video, they talked about how they turned um, like tea towels and some little quilted pieces into easy project bags, similar to a pillow with a zipper. And so um, I think I'm going to try out their example. It's, it's not a full tutorial, but uh, like I said, I have let it snow that I want to turn into a project bag. I also have this love what's in my cup. And I think that would be really cute as a project bag. So uh, it would also be cute on the wall, but I don't do a whole lot of decorating for Valentine's Day. So I don't know. And it's way too cute and too much went into it to be just a card. So I think I may turn those into project bags and I like their idea. So, um, cause I have made a vinyl project bag, which I really like the vinyl as well, but I don't know how I would do this with vinyl. Cause if I put this on the inside with the vinyl on the front, it would end up getting all kinds of threads in it when I put my current projects in. So anyways, and that was a previous finish. Let's get to Cozy Winter Wishes and the Stitch Along. So Stitch Along started February 1st with White House Stitchery and Tanya Spielman on Instagram. The hashtag is Cozy Winter Wishes Sal, S-A-L. And I obviously had started before February 1st because I, I've been showing you this on my, um, on my floss tube and on Instagram. And so I have a little bit of a head start, but I'm going to participate with a stitch along anyways. This is on Hazy Gray by Fabric Flare using the called for colors. And I do not have a clue where I was the last time I shared this. But um, I think I had finished the top section. Maybe I just had a little bit left, um, but the top, ugh, top section is definitely done. I finished framing this in and framing this in. And so my goal for this week, and I added this line, my goal for this week is to get this box done. Now, I mentioned earlier, I love the way white looks stitched out. I don't enjoy stitching with white. And so I was like, I started this and I'm like, I was just going to do that, get that hard part done. I'm like, no, I really want to see some color. And so I went to the color stitches and I went down, I would think I did this first and then I did that. And, um, I think her cups are white as well. And I think I'm going to change the color to, um, um, is it 502? I should know because I did a wrong, I did the tree this color, but I think I'm going to do the cups in this color. Um, it's also a little bit in the teapot or coffee pot, whatever you want to call it. Um, I might be changing the cups when I go down there. So yeah, join in that stitch along. It just started. You can get the pattern from White House Stitchery on Etsy and then just join along using that hashtag. I don't think there's an official like finish date. The official start date was February 1st, but I started before that. So, and Tanya included me. So <laughs> definitely check that out. Check out that hashtag. So I look forward to seeing what you guys do and what fabric you guys choose because fabric choices can make all the difference. And you can also do your own color choices. So I love pink snowflakes. I think that's kind of fun. So this would be a fun thing to do with um, some pink snowflakes, but I also love the mint and the aqua and the green. So I'm doing it, like I said, in the called for colors. And I did get DMC163. If I didn't share that already, um, Heather reached out to me. Like I'm saying, this community is amazing. She reached out to me and said, do you need just a little bit? Because it only needed a little bit in the pattern. I can send you a length of thread. I thought that is so sweet. I have two of them. Um, and I also have some fabric and the floss for the next um, White House stitchery thing I plan on doing, which that plan may change. So I'm not going to share it here. Um, and I was going to do it this month. I have so much to do and so little time to do it in. Ah, stick to my notes, stick to my notes. What's next? So stitch along the other stitch along I am taking part in right now is the sew by row. Stitch Along from Lori Holt, be Lori one, I believe on Instagram. And I think it's just Lori Holt on Flosstube, as well as the Kimberly Jolly from the Fat Quarter Shop Flosstube. 
and I have changed colors somewhat. Um, well, a lot. <laughs> Let me pull out the pattern. <laughs> this is the Sew by Row pattern. And I'm just going to show you here because I think it might be easier than showing you in my um, notebook. But this is my floss conversion. Still doing, uh, well, I'm doing all kinds of different flosses, aren't I? If it doesn't have anything, I'm using the one that's called for. So I'm using four of the called for and the rest I've all changed. I've pretty much taken out the yellow and the orange. I may add them at some point to one of these. But at this point, I switched it over to purple because I love purple. I can't believe Janet said, Jeanette said she did not like purple. What? I thought we were like kindred. Just kidding. But um, I do love purple and especially the lilac shade of purple. So I got quite a bit done, but I am still, <laughs> I feel like... I'm constantly behind on the stitch along. And I think when you start a stitch along late, it can tend to feel that way, especially if it's one where there's a lot of stitching. And this doesn't quite look like a lot. When she, like I said, once you get the pattern down on something, it's easier. But there is those sewing machines, those full covered sewing machines, oh, I still don't have them done. So um, I thought, well, I'm gonna go down and work on the quilt blocks. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm gonna go down and start working on the quilt blocks and I just one, two, three, four, five. So one a day with a couple of extra days thrown in to finish it off, I'm still not there. So tomorrow is when you're supposed to start the the irons. <laughs> I'm so far behind, there's no way I'm getting there. So um, I just have to accept the fact that I, I can't keep up. I'm not gonna catch up. And that's okay. That really is okay. That's just like the OCD in me coming out, I think. Um, but here's where I am. And I'll give you a little close up. So the tomatoes, I changed to purple and yellow. I changed the sewing machines. So the sewing machine, the red one, I changed to pink. I changed my colors of green and um, made this more of an aqua. And then the corresponding changes in here. And then I'm changing, I think that's the thread that was called for, I mean, it called for yellow, but my substitute for the yellow. Um, but I still need to add the threads. This will be this light pink. I wanna say it's Sophia's pink or Emma's pink. Um, from Weeks Dye Works, and then I haven't decided yet what color is going to go here. Maybe the maybe the green, the mint, which would make sense. Um, so yeah, I've come down here and started my quilt blocks. I got one done. In my defense, not that I needed defense. This is what I was working on on Saturday when the dog got really sick and I was having, I was having that vertigo so I could stitch for a little bit and then I just kind of needed to rest my eyes. <sighs> so this will stay out and I need to accept that's going to take me at least a week, maybe two weeks longer than what it said. And I think maybe this week my goal will just be to finish. I mean, let's say I let me think about what I could finish and then feel like I accomplished. I think if I finish the sewing machines for this week, um, and then next week finish the uh, quilt blocks, and then the following week get started on that. So if I, by next Wednesday, have the sewing machines done, I will be back on track, which is putting me way far behind, but I also have some started on the next week. So I think that'll be my goal. Not that it matters, it's just there's so much stitching. And I know once things open up again, once people are vaccinated and the numbers start going down, when we can get out again, I am going to want to get out. Like I am a homebody by nature, but I, and I can shop online with the best of them. 
but I like looking at things. I like touching and feeling the fabric and I get claustrophobic and asthma when I'm wearing a mask. So, oh, I am so ready to be able to shop like a normal person. Not that I'm normal, but. <laughs> oh, okay. So that's the sew by row stitch along. I talked about the cozy winter wishes stitch along. January sampler. Another one. Not done yet. And when I get to the Happy Mail, I've already got the March sampler. And I haven't started on February. I don't... Well, never mind. I'll just show you. This is the January sampler from Country Cottage Needleworks. Here we go. Sampler of the month. Doesn't really want to focus so well. And I'm doing it with... Um, I'm in the club from Fat Quarter Shop, so they send you the patterns every month, and I'm just using what they sent. So the fabric, the thread, everything is from them, and I'm just doing in the called for. So that's what I have so far. I was also hoping to have that house done this weekend, but that did not happen. And I had talked about maybe just starting February and get a head start on that. I'm already behind on that. So I'm not really sure. I think I'm going to just finish January. I think I will feel better having a month finished before I start the next month. And then I'll do February. I really like February. I may skip March. And when the April one comes, start working on that instead. And that's how I can kind of catch up. And I won't do March until it rolls around again. Um next next if i can stay on track next january <laughs> i'll get march done and that'll give me a month to finish and then a month to fully finish so this is in my dot dot goose designs bag i've got all of the threads they've sent me i have been using her pal and really liking it um it holds it's got felt inside and it holds the threads and I'm really liking that. I might make some more for myself. Um, I've got two of her pals in two different project bags, but um, it's really been nice to have that. Or like, um, I want to say it's called a bitty board. Lori Holt made them. There's a video, an older video um, on Fat Quarter Shop where they showed how to make them. So I made a few for myself and that's great for holding threads too. But I kind of need one for each project I'm working on. I'm finding so I need to make some more before I get to plans I have a fully finish I have a finish for plans I want to work on so again I just wanted to give a shout out and say thank you for everybody who listed somebody that I could watch or some videos on finishing fully finishing uh cross stitch things if you have one I didn't mention or you don't see in the description or don't want to look let me know shout them out because there will come times where I'll have watched all the floss tubes and I'll, um, or while I'm finishing, see when I'm sewing, I like to watch others quilters while they're just quilting or sewing. And so I'll play those videos, especially, um, things I have to watch again, but maybe not fully concentrate on. Um, so that'll be a time when I get back into the sewing room that I'll be watching some of these finishing videos. And while I'm finishing, I can watch and just get some more ideas. So I'm going to show you the back of this first. This is the Be Well. This was my mistake from the Love Cup from Stitching with the Housewives, okay? So I messed up. I figured out a way to fix it, and now I figured out a way to finish it. So I want to start here. These, This was a two-pack of, um, it has these slats on the front. You can kind of see the slats. And my only regret is I really want several of these, and I want to finish several for myself like this. Um, it came in a two pack. So I do have one more and I'm looking out to see where I set it down, but I don't know where I got it from. I think it might've been Target or Hobby Lobby. Maybe it was, um, the tag was like, it had this red thing that said $5. So when I see that tag again somewhere, I'll know where I got it, but it was, it might've even been before Thanksgiving, definitely before Christmas that I got this two pack. 
So this is a two and a half inch strip. So if you are a quilter, you may be familiar with jelly rolls. This is one that I had in my stash. Uh, Mandy loves Mickey Mouse, Minnie Mouse, Disneyland. So this reminds me of Minnie Mouse's bow. So I wrapped it around here to hide the back of the finishing so that you couldn't see the cardboard uh, or the press on board. But, um, I didn't have to use a full thing of fabric behind there. So I did that. And then this was from one of the stitch quarterlies. So I, I think it was, uh, it might've even been the Santa baby one. And so, like I said, Mandy and I opened stitch quarterly together. So when she gets her stitch quarterly or when she's looking at it, she'll probably recognize that. I just, you didn't have, I didn't have to do this because it's glued on the front actually behind my piece but I just used a little piece of that gingham ribbon that came in the stitch quarterly and, and tied it in a knot and it brought it together. So it kind of looks like a bow. So I was pretty, I don't know. I was pleased with that little, it, you know how sometimes things work out and sometimes things don't and you work on work work and nothing works out. This is like everything I did. I thought, oh, this is cute. This is cute. And I'm not sure why, maybe because I didn't have as much pressure on myself. This was a whoopsie accident throwaway piece as it turned out so cute. So this is my finish. I think I've hyped it up enough. The coloring is off. I wonder. Um, because this is like a minty, I don't know that that helped at all. Oh, a little better. So I mounted this on the sticky board with a little bit of, um, uh, batting. I don't know why that word escaped me. Um, and I think I showed this before, but there's a little bumblebee this kind of went off the edge and I couldn't fit it on and fit the words. So um, nobody will even notice, but it kind of goes off to the side. I cut another sticky board a little bit bigger. And this is just a remnant, a uh, fat eighth of some not quite check, but there's kind of check lines in pink. And then this is an iridescent rickrack. I think I got that from Joann's. This is more of the, um, the two and a half inch strip. And I, sounds awful, doesn't it? Sorry. I wrapped some more of this ribbon around it. And the hardest part of this was deciding whether I wanted it to be with a knot, this, these kind of pieces showing, or just the, um, just the plain ribbon on it. And then I saw, you know, a button would be really cute. So I grabbed a button. I have this button pack with several different buttons in it. And then I'm like, you know, if I had a little bit of black and white uh, twine, and I had some up there. So I added the little uh, baker's twine. I ran it through the holes and tied it in a little knot. And it's just so stinking cute. So it was just a piece of fabric. I wish I had a piece. I should have brought some fabric down, but I'm just going to show you. This is a clean tissue. So you just have a length of fabric. And all I did was I brought it together. And I actually just sewed it together, but you don't even have to sew it. And then I scrunched it. So I just kind of pinched it together. I don't want to pinch it evenly. And then I wrapped that ribbon around it and tied it in a knot. That's it's as simple as that. You could glue gun it together and then I just stuck it on there. And so you see from the front, simple, simple bow. So there's my finish. Okay, it looks really crookedy in the camera, so I may have to fix that. <laughs> But there's my finish of Be Well. And I got these library cards. Is that what they're called? Yeah, library car cards from It's So Emma, Lori Holt. Yep, me and my bonnet co. Um, I'm going to, or my plan is to fill one of these library cards out. I got this for Christmas in my stocking. And I'm going to put, slip that back in here behind 
this. And the thing is that if she, if I can get it to her while she's still in rehab, this can sit on a counter or it can sit on the tray or a nightstand or something. Um, it doesn't have to be hung on a wall. It can sit on a desk, anything. Um, when she gets home, she can continue to use it for that. Or it's just hot glued on there. So she can peel it off and use it for something else. Um, I don't think she will, but she could. I mean, it, I'll be giving it to her, so. Oh, not cute. Oh, you can't see it. <laughs> okay. So, with that... I saw somewhere else, and I, again, don't know where I first saw it, but February is for finishes. So my plan for February was to start all the things, start all the love things, the Valentines. Um, I don't know. I have a ton of things I want to make, and I love love, even though I don't decorate for Valentine's Day. I do love love, so I thought I'd love stitching on love stuff, and there's so many cute things that have come out, but February is for finishes. I'm like, okay, but I'm maybe next year. <laughs> but I do have a lot of things that are finished that need to be FFO'd. So this is one of them. This is by Med Madame or Madame Chantilly. I'm going to look up number five. These, this is all the information. I'm sure it was just the called for things that I used. Again, fabric flare. Hazy Gray is the fabric that I used. It's an Ada 14 count. And here is my love. I love this. Um, I might hang this even in my bedroom at some point. Um, so uh, my goal for February, my next FFO, will be to possibly do the cups that I have done, the Let It Snow and this one. Um, into project bags and then this into a fully finish. And I am thinking probably on a shutter is what I'm thinking, but I have to get out. I have to not be dizzy so I can drive and get out and get that piece to finish it on. But that would be an FFO goal. And I went ahead and ordered the sticky board for it because it's 14 inches uh, long or it's like 13 and a half inches. So I needed a 14 inch long sticky board if I finish it like I am thinking I'm going to finish it. So I got that and we'll see. Fat Quarter Shop is doing a stitch along, um, Be Mine stitch along. That's what it's called. And I am all for it. <laughs> oh, I have one more new start. No, oh, I have a new start to share with you. I'm getting all confused. This is a part of the bet and it wasn't here. Um, this is a part of the Mind Stitch Along. This is Stronger Together. So February is Black History Month. It's also Heart Health Month. So it makes sense to stitch all the heart things. It makes sense to get some history lessons about black history, um, especially here in the U.S. And they, that quarter shop put together this um, pattern. Where's my clipboard? Here it is. It's called Stronger Together, and I posted on Instagram yesterday asking, well, Monday, won't be yesterday because this is not going up today. Um, Stronger Together came with, the pattern comes with two different choices, and I asked uh, which one I should start first. So let me backtrack just a little bit. The pattern is available at the Fat Quarter Shop website, for instant download, it comes with a history lesson on Elizabeth Hobbs Keckley. Yes, Elizabeth Hobbs Keckley. I read this uh, to you in a previous video if you uh, care to see me get all emotional. Um, but it, it gives um, just a background on her, just a, kind of a little biography on her, which is really neat. Um, and then the two patterns. So you got the pattern and the bonus chat, the pattern and the bonus pattern. And the proceeds from this, they're donating 100% to UNCF, United Negro College Fund. So it's a worthwhile cause. Um, you buy it, they're going to donate. I'm not sure if that's a 
January, February thing, or if that's a forever thing, or if this is only going to be limited time that it's offered. Uh, but go ahead and get it. It's a great pattern. This block, after reading on the blog, um, the Jolly Jabber blog, I, this is one of the blocks that were used in the Underground Railroad. They would hang blocks or quilts to let you know whether it was a safe house or not, or which direction to go to get to the next stop. And so that was really cool that this, I mean, it looked like a quilt block because it was, it is a quilt block. Um, so, you know, I love quilting. So that was an obvious choice. My friends on Facebook, friends and family, um, I think all, when I checked last, all of them had said do the quilt block because they know I'm a quilter. I'm going to do both of them though. Uh, the ones on Instagram are mainly cross stitchers and they know this one is going to go together quicker. <laughs> I'll get that satisfaction. And so again, another fabric, I think February might be fabric flare for me. Um, so I did decide to start the words. I love the message behind it. Um, not feeling very strong lately, but stronger together. And I am so, 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 so looking forward to the time when we can all get together again. So this is Aqua 14 count from Fabric Flare. And the colors I'm using are a little bit different. They're not going to show up on camera, but the, the blue green color is, I think it's deep ocean from gentle arts. And I think I got it as a, it might've been like a daily deal type of a thing. Um, and I love this color. It's wonderful. And then, you know, I was talking about the white issue. I had bought some dinky dyes, natural silk, and I think it was Annie Joyfield Stitcher who talked about it. I, I could be wrong, but I think that's who I was watching that was talking about it, giving good, oh, maybe it was Elizabeth Ann can stitch. You know, I do this every time, don't I? Because I watch so many and then I forget what I learned from. I'm so sorry. Somebody was talking about how that silk gave better coverage. So I decided to pull it out and try it for this. Um, there's not a whole lot of white, but so far I've been really pleased with it. I don't have any complaints. Um, and I wanted to get to strong. So I worked on it a little bit this morning so that I could share with you strong, stronger together. Yeah, we, we need each other. We really, really do. And as with every floss tube video, the sun has gone back and forth and back and forth. So that's stronger together. I've got the other piece cut and ready to go for the quilt block. Um, these came in two different packages. So the die lots are just slightly different. Um, and with fabric flare, I believe it's screen printed or somehow printed on the fabric because one side is white and the other side is uh, the pattern, which means you get that great modeling throughout the piece. That's one of the reasons I love it so much. But just like with anything that's printed um, or even dyed, it can be a little bit slightly different. So if you want the pieces to be exact, you'll want to get it from the same length of crop cloth. And one of the things I found on um, Fabric Flare's website is you can order bigger pieces. Oh, it's going to be dangerous. So this color that I'm going to do for just my type, um, or no, not just my type, this is for the quilt block. It's just a little bit different color. Um, I would say a little more of the green in it and the other is a little more of the blue. And the quilt block will end up more than likely going in my little sewing um, niche area. And this stronger together, uh, I may not even keep it. Um, but if I do and put it on the wall, it'll be in this room. It might, you know, be a great pillow on here. Wouldn't it be a great pillow? Yeah, I think that'd be a great pillow. So, uh, you know, I'm not to finishing on that one yet. But I went with the color that was a little bit lighter and bluer for that one. Okay, so other than the two stitch-alongs, the Winter Wishes, Cozy Winter Wishes stitch-along and the Sew by Rose stitch-along, and the finishing that I plan on doing and the whip go I plan on doing, I, I 
think I'm planning more in my week than I really have. I plan on two more new starts. So that was a new start. Um, I'm going to start this today. This is Stitches from the Heart. This is a freebie pattern from the Fat Quarter Shop. I mean, the Fat Quarter Shop, I showed you my haul before. They got me, they got me good. And so I'm gonna be starting this. Kimberly did a stitch along video this morning and I got to watch about five minutes of it. So I'm gonna finish watching her video uh, while I stitch along with her. And right now I'm just trying to decide between doing a white Ada or the minty green Ada that, is that what I did with the cup? I love this color. Um, it's iridescent. Uh, and I'm going to turn this into either a project bag or a pillow. But um, I love this color, but I don't know if it's because of the opalescent or just the 14 count Ada that was used. It's so stiff. It doesn't feel very good in my hands. So I don't know. I've got a big enough piece I could do in that, but then that kind of limits what I do with the pillow around it. So, or the project bag around it. So we'll see what I end up choosing, but I'm going to choose tonight. I did get the MPI silks. Um, I haven't done very much with silks. I just showed you, I did the white on that, um, stronger together. Uh, and I did another, was it MPI silks or was it Cosmo, which isn't silk, I don't think. Uh, but anyways, some, some white. I've tried a few different whites. So this will be using reds and pinks. That'll be fun. Um, that I'm starting today. On Friday, I plan on starting just my type. I'm so excited. And like I said, fabric flare. Because I'm thinking... Uh, I, I have a blush pink that I thought about doing this on. But wouldn't this be cute on the whiteboard? I love that. That's probably... That's my favorite one, <laughs> the whitewash board and the hazy gray are my two favorite. I do, I, I prefer the grays. So those are my plans for the week. The only thing I have left, two new starts, maybe fabric dyeing, two FFOs. So Happy Meal, I have a lot of things on order, mostly fabric on order um, and some floss, but I did, and I thought, oh, I don't have any happy mail this week. And then I went to the mailbox last night or yesterday, and uh, there were two things in there from Fat Quarter Shop. So they're both part of uh, clubs or subscriptions I'm a part of. First, I touched on this before. This is the March sampler from Country Cottage Needleworks. And I'm sure you've already seen this multiple places, but it's the little leprechauns little leprechauns. So um, yeah, that's the January sampler that can go right into my January or into my dot dot goose designs bags with the other samplers. And then the other is Floss Frenzy. This is the week's dye works. I hope I didn't just show my address. I'll have to cut that out. <laughs> so this is the week's dye works. It's Carolina blue. So the colors, I'm gonna pull this out of here. So I should have said, um, spoiler alert, <laughs> if you don't wanna know the colors, but I'm sure by the time I post this, everybody will have theirs. Uh, they are Sky, Jaybird, Dutch Iris, Periwinkle, Shepherd's Blue, and Blue Jeans. So let me, Okay, so we have Sky and Jaybird and Dutch Iris, which has a little bit of purple to it. Very pretty. Um, same with Periwinkle, a little bit more purple. The next one is Shepherd's Blue. which is a nice silvery blue. And then the last one is blue jeans. I know I don't have the best lighting. It goes in and out here. Um, so the colors might not be quite true, but let me, 
What was that show? Smarter than a fifth grader or something like that? Yeah, I have a clipboard here, Heather. Just clip them in. <laughs> so those are the colors from the Floss Frenzy this month from Fat Quarter Shop. And I think that Sky is the only color I already have. So, and it is called for in something I have coming up. So I was like, yeah, yay, I need that one. Very nice. So that is all I have for you this week. Man, it's a long video. Um, seems like a lot, uh, but probably because I had a lot of squirrels <laughs> going in different directions. Who can name that movie? Okay, so I hope that you guys are having a great week. I hope that the things are going well in your part of the world and that you are getting lots of time to get stitching done. I will see you guys in my next video, Lord willing, next week. <laughs> Hopefully it'll be shorter and not so wild and squirrely. You guys have a great week. I will see you on Instagram. Remember to find me at Heather's Creative Blessings and I will see you soon. Bye.